All right, welcome back to the channel. So, tonight is fight night. Terrence Crawford versus Kell Brook uh, for the WBO Welterweight Championship. This may be Terrence Crawford's last fight with top rank. And as a result, that's why I'm, or because of that, I'm telling you, Terrence Crawford get a knockout, man. Terrence Crawford by knockout or else. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So the number one pound for pound fighter in the world returns to the ring tonight against the former IBF champion, Kell Brook, in a fight that I believe should be very good. I do believe that it is on paper Terrence Crawford's uh, biggest test. And quite honestly, that's really not saying a lot because um, Kell Brook is kind of, um, you know, he's been through the washer and the dryer several times, dude. Okay, his, uh, if he was a shirt, he'd be a worn out t-shirt, a comfortable one, but one that is quite worn out and you ain't mistaken for new, okay? Specifically, both of his eyeballs. And one of the funny things, <laughs> before I get into the subject matter of the topic, of the, of the, um, of the video, <laughs> Terrence Crawford clowned that dude when, when Kell Brook said, look into my eyes, you see in my eyes. <laughs> and Terrence Crawford said, man, I can't see nothing in your eyes. <laughs> both your eyes messed up. What am I supposed to see? That was very clever, Terrence. However, Kell Brook is a very, very serious fighter, and this is a fight that Terrence Crawford should be taking very, very seriously for multiple reasons, okay? Now, one. Um, as far as the fight and how I think it's going to play out, I believe that Terrence Crawford is going to knock out Kell Brook, and I believe it's going to be in the later rounds, right? Eight, nine, ten, somewhere around there, I believe that Terrence Crawford should be able to stop Kell Brook, I believe. Okay. However, there are a lot of things that have me saying that I'm not quite sure. Number one, this is the biggest fight for Terrence Crawford in this in that this is the biggest man that he's fought with the most skill. This is the biggest combination of skill and size that Terrence Crawford has faced to date. Um and for somebody that is that far along in his career, and the fact that the last four or five fights the, the 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 competition level was so low that even though this guy Kell Brook is somebody that looks like he's like I said been in it been through the ringer um he's still the best competition to date for 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 Terrence Crawford and there's always that that worry that is is Terrence Crawford's kind of at times loosey goosiness um and risk taking that has gotten him in trouble with Egan out, Evis Calvin, out, Egis Calvinakis got him in trouble with um, uh, Yuriokas Gamboa. Whether or not that little bit of looseness, right, where he's maybe looping a punch, doing something, he's getting excited, he's starting to press the gas, where something where Kell Brook cannot catch him in the middle of that because, you know, Terrence Crawford has looked a little bit chinny. But just the fact that, Ter that, that, that Kell Brook is so tight with his, with his game, right, He's very, very tight coming over the top of the jab, especially if, if Terrence is fighting him from the southpaw stance, right? So, you know, everything tells me, like, if I'm just looking at the two and thinking how it's going to pair out, I think it's going to be a good fight, but that Terrence Crawford will, like Errol Spence Jr. did and like Gennady Golovkin did before, start wearing on um, start wearing on, um, on uh, Kell Brook, right? And, and can, you know, over in the last part of the round, kind of get to him and stop him. But here's my here's the thing, man. And I know um, th that maybe I'm kind of into this stuff a little bit just because Tyson Fury is such a cheater. And he has like looking at all of the blatant ways that Tyson Fury has cheated. It's hard for me not to take that in consideration when I talk about fights like this. Um, so, for example, um, before the Vasily Lomachenko, uh, Vasily Lomachenko, Vasily Lomachenko, Tiafimo Lopez fight, right? I, for months, could not get it out of my head that I believed Tiafimo Lopez was going to win that fight because of all of the intangibles around the fight and the, and the fact that they all favored top rank, right? Like, if you look at top rank and you say, all right, what is top rank's business interest? What is their business model? How do they usually go about things? And if you watch somebody over, say, 50 years, you start getting used to what seeing the same thing happen over and over again. So with... 
Vasily Lomachenko getting to the age of 30 years old, over the age of 30 years old, and you having this young, fresh kid, Tiafimo Lopez, coming up behind him. My thoughts were, um, if I'm Bob Arum and I'm in Bob Arum's shoes, I like Tiafimo Lopez to win this fight because that allows me to um, to where I don't lose anything, right? Tiafimo Lopez has another, God, what is he, 23? He might have another 10 12 years in the game left really about another 10 or maybe you know 15 20 fights with with top rank that he can earn on how many fights did Vasily Lomachenko really have left in the tank right he has 14 fights or 16 total fights 14 and 2 do you really see him getting to 25 wins do you see another nine fights out of Vasily Lomachenko I don't and I don't think top rank does either so they figured hey man let me, let me put him in there at the right time where he can beat this guy who's coming down when he's coming up. It's the same thing that I believe was going to happen to Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez. Where early in Canelo Alvarez, uh, there was always conversations about Canelo fighting Gennady Golovkin, but that fight did not happen until Gennady, until Canelo Alvarez looked like he was starting to peak and Gennady Golovkin had problems with several other fighters and that's when they made that fight. So we're at, so here I see Terrence Crawford with Kell Brook, and I'm looking at the young fighters that are below uh, Terrence Crawford that Bob Merriman and these guys are going to look for. They have he has already has two really big 140 uh, pounders in his stable, Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez that are going to be needing to move up to 140 pounds and 47 pounds, and you got 135 pound a very very big 135 pounder and see if you Lopez is going to be moving up to 140. Now, that on top of the fact that Bob Arum is openly talking about making a fight between Kell Brook and Manny Pacquiao, the fact that Mike Coppinger is, op- is out there reporting that Bob Arum and Terrence Crawford's lawyers are having conversations with one another about getting out of that fight because Ter- uh, getting out of that contract because because uh, match room, excuse me, because uh, Top Rank is not giving him the premier fights that they promised him when he resigned with them, right? Because that's one of the things that um Bomax said when that contract was first signed and they were on and they were and he was on Trill uh boxing talk he was like look they promised us ESPN has the money they have the ability to get the marquee fights they're the biggest network in the world all of that right and or the biggest sports network they can get these big fights made but then what happened the PBC signed a deal with Fox and now, now the PBC's Fox deal with Fox is really better than the one with ESPN. So there's really nothing that ESPN can do to get those fights over there for Terrence Crawford, right? So now they're going through it. In a, they're going through it in negotiations to get out of the fight, to get out of the contract, to go and fight somewhere else. Obviously, towards the PBC. So you add all these things together, and to me, that means that look, Terrence Crawford's got to knock this dude out. You cannot leave this. You cannot leave it to the cards. You cannot leave it to the judges. Because if you got fights that are, cl- you got rounds that are close, you see how these car- these scorecards turn out sometimes. You When you have, you'll have a 117, what is it? 115, 114 this way. 114, 115 on the other card that way. Or better yet, it's really, it's more something like, you know, a wide one scorecard will be wide for Terrence Crawford. The other one will be wide for Kell Brook. And then that middle one will be the one like, ooh, what's it going to be? Right. And then, dude, it ain't too much. OK, it ain't too much to think top rank, you know, and those guys don't know where their bread is buttered. And the plan just seems it just seems like a right time for Terrence Crawford to lose and make and make top rank money. No, oh, by the way. Also, there's another thing that, that talked to, that showed that there's an issue between him, Terrence Crawford and top rank. Uh, a few months ago, Terrence Crawford was asked by Bob Arum to take a pay cut. Because of the pandemic. And Terrence Crawford was like, I'm not taking any pay. I'm not taking any pay cut. Like, you're going to have to cut your cut your stuff down. You know what I mean? Like, you said I was going to get this amount of money. I don't care if there's a crowd there or not a crowd there. I want I want the I want the guaranteed money that you said I'm going to that you were going to give me. And I'm not taking any type of discount now. So what is Terrence? What does that tell you? Terrence Crawford is just like Vasily Lomachenko. He's a veteran with a big contract. Okay. And I guarantee you his contract is bigger than Josh Taylor's. I guarantee you it is bigger than Tiafimo Lopez's and it is more than likely bigger than Jose Ramirez's. And so by getting rid of him, 
He also gets rid of the the ability, the necessity to pay that big that big contract. He goes. I don't know, Bob Aram, get some cash for him to let him go. But you know, we've been just been going back and forth on this in my Instagram about whether or not <laughs> Bob Aram is going to let Terrence Crawford go with that WBO belt, and I I just don't know. So as far as this fight goes, what I certainly hope is that Terrence Crawford goes in there and gets the knockout. I expect for him to go in there and get the knockout. But if that fight goes to the scorecard, I'm telling you, I'm going to be nervous. And I would not be surprised if Kell Brook pulled that off unless, especially if there's close rounds. If it's a wide, ridiculous blowout with three different knockdowns of Kell Brook and all that, and it goes to the scorecard, I think Terrence Crawford will get it because it's just that it's just that blatant, I hope. But if it's a bunch of nip and tuck, close rounds and feel out rounds up until four rounds and then... Terrence Crawford tries to press the gas, but he's not really able to press the gas like that on Brooke. It could turn out another way, but we'll see. You let me know what you think in the comment section. Um, thank you guys so much for your support. And with that, I'm out. Peace.